Dr. Jackson, welcome to the program. Thank you. How confident are you that the opposition will win the election? Well, according to the polls of many institutions, and also including our internal poll, we are confident that we are winning. You confident that Puatai will win outright and be able to govern? Uh, more likely, more likely, we will win outright. Why do you say that? Uh, well, the, if you if you look at the analysis, that uh, even we've been bought uh, many MPs out when they dissolve the PPP, we still have the largest number of MP in the parliament, and we start from two thirty at that time. But now the uh, popularity is much better than than last time, so we should be able to win outright. What if the election is too close? to be clear-cut. Do you think that that could create further civil unrest? I don't think so. It depends. If you leave it according to the, uh, the democratic, democratic principle, that is, the, uh, the, the leading party should have the right to form the government first. That should be okay. But if you're trying to use force, like uh, you use the military to force the uh, small parties to form with that faction, not this faction, that might be a uh, clear problem. But I hope that we learn a big lessons for the uh, conflict in our country already. And now the Puerto Rican Party offer reconciliation, even though we've been victim of the uh, of, of of the the, the conflict in the past. We still offer reconciliation, even though we are winning. This, that it should be a chance for Thailand to uh, reconcile the difference of what we have been, been suffering for five years. What if, though, for example, it's close enough that the Democrats could form a coalition with smaller parties, therefore run the country even if Pua Thai wins the bulk of the popular vote? Well, that is... Uh, let's see. We That's a real possibility, though, isn't it? Well, I think the I may be optimistic that Puerto Rico will win outright majority. We might be optimistic, but I think so far, if it were to have election tomorrow, we win outright. The party's slogan is, in English, "Tax and thinks Puerto Rico acts." So, are you in fact the de facto opposition leader from outside the country? Well, I I may influence in terms of the uh, ideas and thinking because I have more experience than others. And then uh, I, I just want to see them success. And I just share my experience as a former Prime Minister and experience of running around the whole world and uh, just giving them some ideas. So they, and they, they have the teams. Sometimes they think as well. They, we just share and then finally we agree together. So is it fair to say, though, that a vote for Pua Thai is a vote for, if not you, your policies, your, your attitudes? I think it's vote for policy. We have a uh, different kind of policy that address different groups of people. We, uh, we are addressed with their debt, they're addressed with their income, we address the problem with their uh, worry about their children, that is narcotics and also the uh, education. So we provide them with the uh, one tablet PC per child. Yes, I mean, it, it sounds like a great idea, mm. Wi-Fi and a tablet for yes. each child. Yes. But how realistic is that? Is that just a, a popul populist policy to get votes that can't no, actually be used? No, uh, we, we, are, we are well known by whatever we said we deliver. During Thai Lak Thai Party, we deliver everything that we said, even more than what we said as well. For example, we do that lily for the small farmer. We did that. We do, we did the uh, village fund, uh, one million baht village fund for every village in six month time after we came to government. And also we delivered the 30 baht healthcare scheme uh, in six months time as well. Your sister Ying Luck is leading the party. How is she qualified to be leader? Well, you know, she 44 years old. And uh, she has master degree from US, and uh, she been working from uh, uh, small officers until the CEO of EIS, which is an organization with more than ten thousand employees and uh, about five billion uh, turnover, five billion US dollars turnover. She been passing through 
uh, a lot of experiences, uh, even though she's, she's a lady. But the lady is, is good without political pack, pack, baggage, is good for leading reconciliation. Yet she has no actual experience as a politician. To go from no political experience to prime minister, that's a big jump. Well, uh, even, even myself, I don't have much experience in politics when, when I jump to prime minister. I may be uh, minister for foreign affairs, it's only three months, and I may be deputy prime minister, it's only uh, one year, and another time it's only two months. So it's not that long. And she been of surf politics through my father as a former MP and through myself as a prime minister. And even though she worked in the business part, and uh, she represented me. Well, in, in fact, she, you've been quoted as describing her as your clone. What do you mean by that? Well, she used she 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 my youngest sister, and uh, when I when I marry, she's just eight years old. And uh, when my pa- mother passed away, she just 18 years old, and she's still in the university, not even finished yet. So I groom her from there, and uh, I send her to school, finish university here, and then master degree in the U.S. And then I, she came back to work for me. She worked for me from the beginning. So I teach her, I train her, the working habit style is really exactly like me. Mm. But in describing her as a clone, are you saying that she's your puppet? That she's no. doing what you no. tell her to do? No. Clone is mean that the same culture, the same background, the same ideas, the same attitude, the same thinking. One of the key planks of the Red Shirt campaign has been for democracy, obviously. Mm. How is it democratic to appoint your sister to head the party and potentially become Prime Minister? No, no. Is I, we looking for the people that can lead the parties. And then she is one of the choice that we propose. And with the committee of the parties, we have to select. And we discuss over and over. And uh, we tr- we, before her, we try to recruit someone outside the parties. But they're scared mm. to come. Mm because of the rumors about uh, disband the parties again, you know, when you win, you will not be able to, to form the government. That's the rumors keep spreading. Mm-hmm. So somebody else from out, the outsider feel scared to come in. So if we have only insider left, and as insider, we have limit, limit, very limited number that as finally she might be a good answer for it. And then we propose the, uh, to the executive committees of the party, they unanimously agree. If there was one criticism during your prime ministership that uh, too much of it was about you, your businesses, your family, does this follow that train of thought? No, it's not that true. They just allege. They're trying to to bring here and there. We are big family. Shinawatra alone. 170 some people and uh, I'm, I'm not rest them they have their parents they have their families and they grew up in different areas but not because of I put them there even in if I were to be able to put them there I don't put my sister at that time as the minister during my premiership I didn't do it there is no Shinawatra in the same cabinet member which I can do it but I don't do it did Ying like want to do it? Well, she want to. She really prefer if she prefer. She prefer on the business side, but uh, when needed, she was ready to sacrifice. And I said that you know one of the reason is for reconciliation purpose because you are ladies, you are you no have no political baggage. There's been some discussion in the Thai newspapers about whether you actually want her to be Prime Minister. This has been a point of debate over the last few days. Can we get this clear? Do okay. you want her to okay. be Prime Minister or not? Now confirm that I'm supporting her as a Prime Minister. She's made it clear that an amnesty for those on political charges is a priority for the opposition. Is that well, about you? Well, reconciliation is the priority, not the amnesty. Reconciliation... Amnesty may be part of it, but not all. 
But in part of that legislation, there are still one thing that we need to do is the uh, rule of law reform. Thailand now, we don't have the rule of law. We don't observe the law as international practice. So it's time that we should bring reconciliation to the process of, uh, of, of the reform of the rule of law. So rule of law is not just only for political purpose or social purpose, including economic purpose as well. Mm. But one spin-off of that is that you would receive amnesty for the charges against you. Well, if, if is, is it partly about you and not mm, about the reconciliation? No, it's not. I please just don't care about me that much. Let but, the but co- people do. <laughs> well, let's bring back the unity for the country first. If in in the process of bring back the unity of the unity of the country, I'm part of it. Then I might benefit a part of it, but I don't care much because I'm quite settled outside. You know, but I just want things to move forward. I want to see the country un- unity. I don't. I, and and now I'm do a lot of business outside Thailand because I'm hyperactive. I cannot sit. I don't do nothing. So I do a lot of mining in Africa. So I. I You've got I, enough to do, huh? I got enough to do. And you know, when my sister, youngest sister, become prime minister why I want to go back as a prime minister again. Well, I don't know. I mean, you've said, have you not, that you will come back at the end of the year. Is that right? Well, you know, that is my wish. I wish to uh, to play uh, respect and wish His Majesty on his 84th birthday, seven cycle. That is very meaningful. Mm-hmm. But if I can do it, if not, it's fine. And are you saying that you would like to come back just to visit then, or you'd like to come back permanently at the end of the year? Well, it depends on the situation in Thailand. If um, I can do business, I can best from uh, anywhere in the world, including here in Dubai especially, which is, I like it. It's centrally located. People here are nice. But if I can I can go back to Thailand, I just only visit or just permanently. It, it depends on the situation. Mm-hmm. Well, if the but situation is stable and you can come back, sta- what would you stable, do? Stable and secure mm-hmm. and safety. Because I've been assassinated, attempted four times during my office. So I have to be careful. So if you came back permanently, what would you see your role being? Um, I still want to be uh, lecturers. That's my dream. Playing golf, giving guidance for my children to, for their business endeavor. If That's what I, I really want to. Is becoming prime minister again not on the table? My youngest sister is already there, mm-hmm. so no need for me to go back as a prime minister. Well, unless she made space for you later. No, no, even that, even that. So never, never would you come back and be prime minister again? If it's not uh, extremely necessary for me, to for the benefit of the country. If not, I, w- I will not go. Why would it be necessary for you? If the country need me because of some situation that I can be the solution, I will. If not, please, I don't want to. Mm, well, one pervasive rumour is that uh, Ying Luck is elected and then at some point in the future she stands aside and there's a by-election and you take her seat and slide back into the Prime mm, Minister's no, job. No, no, that's not my ambition. If she can, if she can, can, can do, she can do a good job for the people in the country. Why, why, why do I? I better just giving her moral support, whatever that she need to consult. Then I give her advice, and then I play golf, enjoy my life. I'm 62 already. I'm not 38, but 38 to 100. Yes. <laughs> You talked about uh, the main issue being reconciliation and unity, and and that's clear that that is the main problem. Yes. Would it be better for you just to to go away and and keep quiet? Because in a way, you're what's causing some of that division. You're you're such a a, a figure for people. You have to trace back what is the cause of the division. Democrat lost one after another over Thai Lak Thai. They have no way to win over us. Our popularity is when peak, 
when we won 377 seats out of 500. And then they start to rock the boat from there. So that is comes to the problems that because they want to topple me undemocratically. You are the figurehead of the, the protest movement, the red shirt movement. Yes. Therefore, you are creating a, a love-hate situation in Thailand. It's, you have to be fair that... Yeah, but that's I, what's happening. You happened. have to be fair that the double standard of enforcing law is there. The people, they hate injustice. They hate undemocratic way of handling the, the situation. They don't like coup d'etat. So that is not good for the country. They should stop that kind of behavior. Let's, you know, now the, the, the world is changing. Everything you do here, it's been known all over the world. So you have to be, uh, let the system work, let the system function uh, uh, properly. Let democratic uh, uh, activities do its course. So... And then if you allow free and fair election, let the government form according to the parliament system, parliamentary system. Mm. That's, I think it will be paved the way for reconciliation and for unity. That is what Thailand needed. If we talk about double standards, I mean, is uh, initiating an amnesty um, also uh, reducing the credibility of the court system, for example? Well, if the... I, you have to look at the way the court handled the political case. It's really political. The court have not observed the law of law. For example, my case is uh, the allegation from, come from coup d'etat. And the coup d'etat people at the junta appoint my political opponents to, to investigate me. And is one court system. They don't listen to uh, the evidence from my size, and and you you see the the the, the verdict is uh, seven to eight to seven, and the, the day that the, the the judge sitting on the bench only seven to seven. One has been uh, uh, resigned. It's seven to seven. So. They don't observe the rule of law at all. They just do to serve political purpose. That is not good for the country, not good for the court system. If, if there was an amnesty, though, those let, people... Let, let, before, let me put it this way. When the military staged the coup, they announced amnesty for themselves. And the uh, democratically elected government accepted and when now the democratic elected has been punished by the junta, and then they want to uh, do the amnesty, and we cannot accept it. So you have to, to be fair, but the amnesty is not mean that you do for yourselves, but a piece it and to tell might be, uh, become a criminal if they were to be fired the case. So they would also be subject to the amnesty, right? Well, the amnesty, it must be discussed how we can cover, how extent we can cover. So but we, we must fare for every party. Anything, any conflict that happened after the uh, coup d'etat must be, must be included for this discussion. But before that, we have to do healing for those who are unfortunate, like those who die, yes. those who injure, will, will those who be in jail unfairly. That's what we have to discuss. We, it's not mean that we force. We have to discuss, we have to talk, sit down and talk to each other. You talked about the double standard. During your prime ministership, there were unprosecuted killings of, of drug dealers. There were killings of people in southern Thailand that never went to the courts. So people would argue that you're just as bad. How, how can you accuse this government okay. when you did that? Let, let me put it this way. Right after I left the office, the military junta 
has appointed a committee to investigate because they want to get me every comments in the newspaper, every criticize over me about it. They want to investigate. And they investigate all the cases as well, including drug. And they found no cloud. It's just the criticism on newspaper. Otherwise, they're going to not, not, not let me uh, flee like this. So you refute that entirely? Right. They, it's been investigated. It's been, it's been uh, 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 finished all the process. And it's been re-investigated again. And, and the, the committee found out that there's no cloud to prosecute me. Otherwise, they will not let me free like this. They're going to prosecute me. Even, even the small, stupid thing, they still prosecute me. <laughs> Could I ask you for a more, more personal um, reflection? Yes. How did you feel last year watching what was unfolding in Thailand over those months of April and May? Well, I'm very sad on... The, uh, the death of the protester and the military as well. And uh, there shouldn't be uh, this kind of incident happen because we are Thai if we have more dialogue. But it's pity that the dialogue is not there and we're trying to open dialogue before mm. it's not there because they thought that the way reconciliation in the sense of the government is that they're trying to uh, get rid of me and the church leaders and then they can reconcile with the rest which is uh, impossible because the way they treat unfairly the way they've been treated unfairly the way uh, the double standard has been used that is create more of anger and hatred so I think uh, that is very very sad for me when things that happen. And people's loved ones then died. Yes. Did, did you feel any sort of personal responsibility for what happened? Yes. We, I, I, I did uh, some kind of support and help and then you know I call almost every, every uh, family who lost, lost their loved ones and uh, I, I, I supporting them personally. Uh, as much as we can, because I'm, I'm, st- I'm living in this distance. Mm. But uh, you know, and there is one father who lost the second, the second one who died in uh, in Panfa. Uh, he has two sons. The elder son died, and the younger son, and he himself is there. I call him, and it's very touch. I I ask. I am I offer condolences to him and he said that uh, me and my younger son will continue fighting we want you to come back and please take good care of your health oh it's very touch I said no, no, don't worry about me I'm worried about your family so this is what what the people you know they, they feel like they they feel like you know they want to see uh, the, the justice uh, to be to prevail in Thailand Dr. Texan, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much.